Right, so uh, welcome to this week's uh, Tanya class. We are studying uh, chapter 4 in Tanya. And this week the Alta Rebbe introduces a very, very important concept in the spiritual makeup of us human beings. And that is that up until now we learned about the two godly souls. And we learned about the ten soul powers that we have, namely the three intellectual powers and the seven emotional powers. And this week, in Tanya, the author goes in to explain something which is called, I'll say it in Hebrew and then I'll translate, levushim, which translates as garments. Garments of what? Garments of the godly soul. So, namely, the levushim, which translates as garments. That means every single godly soul has something which is called garments. What are the garments? I'll tell you the words in Hebrew, and then we'll translate, and we'll explain what they are. Garments in Hebrew are called machshava, dibur, and maase. Machshava is your thought. Dibur is your speech. And maase is your action. And these are called garments. Now, what does that mean, garments? Um, garments are as follows. And you'll see why this is an extremely crucial chapter in the whole understanding of Tanya, mysticism, and understanding the human uh, psyche, and more importantly, obviously, the spiritual component of the person. And through understanding the garments, you will be able to have a, um, an amazing relationship with God. And specifically, when you're going through hard times, knowing about the garments is really extremely helpful. Okay, what are the garments of the soul? Thought, so we said it's thought, speech, and action. What's thought, speech, and action? That is as follows. When a person studies Torah, so you use your intellect, namely your Chachma Bina Vadas, you try to comprehend what you're studying, and you have a deep understanding of it. But besides understanding, there's something which is called Machshava. Machshava basically is just like, for example, we said it's a garment. So take, for example, you're wearing a jacket. You can take off the jacket, you can put on the jacket. You put on, let's say, a, a sporty jacket, you look like in a sporty mood. You put on a casual jacket, in a casual mood, and so on and so forth. So in other words, the garment doesn't really express who you are. It's an, an external expression of what you're trying to either demonstrate or the way you feel, etc. So in other words, your machshava, your thought, is almost like an empty loading dock. It's, it's an empty loading dock. Your thoughts are empty. What does that mean? You're constantly thinking about something. But you can choose what you're putting on the dock. So if you're thinking about God, or if you studied some Torah and you're thinking about what you just studied, and you know, as you comprehend it, now you start thinking about it. So now your loading dock is filled with divine wisdom and divine ideas. So again, there's a world of a difference between intellect, that's comprehension, and then there's the thoughts what you think about, you think about what you're studying. So generally speaking, in the world of your thought comes in from your intellect, your Chachman Bina and Das, and that's where you think about the in-depth of what you contemplate and what you studied. As you fill your Machshava with, with, with the Torah, so now what takes place now at this moment? You are being unified with the Torah and mitzvot that you studied about, and this creates a union with God. And we'll soon explain how the union takes place. Now, the same thing also with your speech. Your speech is also a, it's, it's a garment. What does that mean? Like right now you're sitting, you're all quiet. Then you can start talking. So you don't necessarily have to talk. But it's a garment that you either put on, or you can take off. You can talk or not talk. Generally speaking, what does one speak about? So you speak about things that you've studied, things that you thought about, and things that you're excited about. Excited both in a positive way, and as we'll call it love, you want to do something and you're excited about meeting someone, so you use your deep or your speech to talk about it. Or, God forbid, if you're in awe, in a, it, could be, it could be a good thing, then it's not God forbid, or like in, a, in a negative way, and then you talk about the fears that you're going through. So Dibur, which is basically a garment, is an expression of your emotions, whether it's positive or negative, or love or awe, etc. Masa, what's Masa? Action. So action, you can act or not act. You can do or not do. So in other words, so since your action you could do or not do, so it's also a garment. 
you can choose to do and you can choose not to do. Okay, so now, since you can choose to do not to do, when you choose to do, it's very simple. Depending on what you're into, depending on what you're excited about, more importantly than you're excited about, that's what you're going to go doing. If you're excited, for example, about uh, you know, some, a mitzvah that you just learned about helping the poor, you're going to go run and try to help a poor person. If you're excited about um, going to synagogue, you're going to go to synagogue. If you're excited about, let's say, going to eat something, you're going to go, you're going to, you're going to go with the excitement. So your action is basically an expression of your feelings, and that's going to be expressed in the world of action. Now, why are the garments so important? And here is the key point of this chapter, and that is as follows. We said that you have a, we all have a godly soul and an animal soul. The godly soul and the animal soul has koichai's powers of your intellect and your emotions. And that is really, because it's your soul powers, that is really who you are. Your intellect, the way you think, the way your view in life, the way you feel about things, both in a positive way, in a negative way, in a loving way, in a fearful way. And that is really your core, who you are. Now, your thought, speech, and action is not really who you are. It's not really who you are. It's just an expression of what you're expressing right now. This is what I'm thinking about right now. This is what I'm talking about right now. This is what I'm doing right now. It's not necessarily who you are. So, two different worlds, however, there's a pro and con in each one. Your thought, speech, and action, because it's not really who you are, so it's not who you are, so the pro is that you can change it very easily. In other words, like this. Let's say, for example, you have certain worldviews which are actually great. That's wonderful. But what happens if you have certain worldviews which are very, very destructive? Or, for example, you have a hate to somebody. Now, it could be somebody even close to you. All of a sudden, you develop a hate for a spouse, for a child, for a friend, for a coworker. Now, how productive is that in a relationship? Whether it's a spouse, a child, or a coworker, it's not going to work. But you develop for some reason. Something got into your head, and you saw something, you heard something, and you can't get it out of your head. And you develop in your in your powers of love and awe and in your emotions, this hate for somebody. So to go to try to change it, it's work. Everything's possible. Certain things is a lot of work. And ultimately, you'll be successful. But meantime, you have to live with a person. Again, it could be a spouse, a child, a parent, a friend. Someone did something or said something to upset you. And in your bones, all of a sudden, you develop this hate for the person. How are you going to get along with the person or at work or your boss? So you're right. In your soul power, you might not be able to change it so easily. You might not be, ever be able to, but you might be able to, over, to, over a long period of time, you'll be able to change it. And it takes a lot of work. However, when it comes to the garments, and here's the key point of this chapter, which will help you in the whole study of Tanya and in your whole spiritual journey of life, is that your thought, speech, and action, just like this jacket, you can take it off, Put it back on, you can take your shirt off, put it on. Any garment that you wear, you can take it off and put it back on. But what do you mean? How do you take it off and put it back on? Because it's only a garment. So the same thing also, even though that you developed a hate to somebody, you can still think, think, in your thought process, not understand and comprehend. I understand I should hate this person. We're not asking you to change your understanding. We're just asking you right now, on the loading dock, I'd like you to put on positive thoughts about the person. Think different. Exactly. In your thoughts, have different thoughts. Not think. Think is more like intellect. I want your thoughts to change. I want you to have some thoughts now about some positive stuff about the person. You can say, but I don't like the person. I'm not asking you to like the person. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you to like the person. I'm asking you to hate the person. I'm not asking you to tell me what you think about the person. I don't, it's, not, it's irrelevant. Right now, I'm asking you, I want you to start having thoughts, positive thoughts about the person. Positive thoughts. You tell me, well, I, I can't. No, because no, you're going back into your intellect and you're going back into your emotions, I'm saying, out of your intellect, out of your emotions, I just want to have, give me some flowing positive thoughts about the person. Now, if, true, it's external, it's not internal, agreed, but we're not, we're, the focus right now is to change your thoughts to positive thoughts. Now, what happens once you change your thoughts to positive thoughts? Two things happen. Guess what? Right now, what are you doing? What are you thinking? 
positive things. Bingo. Isn't that amazing? Now, I grant you, we still didn't deal with your internal struggles and it, your internal things that are bothering you. Let's leave that to the, put aside a second. Let's just deal with a simple jumpstart method for you right now to have positive thoughts. The benefit is very simple. Right now, you're thinking positive things. And what better place to be in that you have in your loading dock of your thoughts, positive thoughts. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you feel it, whether you don't feel it, we're not dealing with that right now. Right now, I'm asking you a request. Please, think positive thoughts about this person, about this place, about this uh, job, about this relationship. Now, again, you keep on going in circles. Well, I don't feel that way. No, no, it's not what I asked you. I asked for one thing. I want to have positive thoughts about this experience. Or this person, whatever you're going, you want to have positive thoughts. Could you do that? Sure you can do it. It's a garment. It's like, let's say, for example, I'm not in the mood of wearing this jacket. And you tell me, put on a jean jacket. I can put it on. Whether I like it or not, it's irrelevant. You ask me to put it on, I can put on a jacket, but I don't believe in, which I don't think is right. So the benefit is that what? I can change my thoughts. The downside is, it's not really a downside, but for conversation piece, you haven't changed who you really are. You still didn't develop a love for that person, or you still didn't develop a real understanding why you should respect and honor this person. I grant you. So it's not internalized. So, but on the other hand, it can be done. And meanwhile, you're happy, and you can have a relationship with the other person, and you can feel great about yourself, about the other person, and you can have a good time right now. You know, in your soul powers, to go change your intellect, that takes a lot of work. A lot of work, you can't change it instantly. If you don't feel you hate somebody, Tell you develop a feeling. No, 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 that takes a long time. And it might not happen, might, yes, it takes a long time. But once there's a change, it's real. So everyone has a pro and con. In the soul powers of intellect and emotion, it's a lot of work and maybe a lot of time. But once it's done, it's real. Here, it's not real. It's just the external self. It's just in the loading dock of your thoughts. But at any second, give me some positive thoughts. And guess what happens? Look in the mirror when you're, not, you're thinking blah thoughts or negative thoughts, right? Look in the mirror, and then all of a sudden I say, start thinking positive thoughts. You will see a noticeable, noticeable, measurable change in your whole face yeah. and in your whole being. So you have like a magic pill to become happy and to become kind and loving and nice just by what? Say, throw me some positive thoughts. Now that is the biggest gift that you can give yourself. That means you're not in the mood of doing something. I want to hear thoughts that you, you are in the mood of doing it. I'm not asking you to change your, thought, your thinking. I'm not asking you to change your feelings. Come on, throw me some positive thoughts. And guess what? All of a sudden you're dancing in your head. So that is in your makshava. That's garment number one. The same thing with Dibur. I say to you, tell this person thank you. Tell this person you appreciate everything they've done for you. What? They haven't done anything for me. I don't feel that way. I agree. I'm not asking you to understand it. I'm not asking you to feel it. I'm just asking you, give me the words. Repeat after me. There's nothing stopping you or anybody for repeating after me. Kind, kind words. Kind words. What's stopping you from saying it? Again, if I ask you to change your ideology, if I asked you to change your way of thinking, if I asked you to change the way you feel, I agree. <laughs> I don't feel that way. I don't think that way. G grant you that. And I'm not asking you to do that. Because that takes a lot of work. And when it, when it will change, it will be real. I'm asking you to give me a quick fix. Bottom line is if you start saying the positive and kind words, guess what happens? You're talking positive. You're wearing a nice suit. You know, a nice garment from your speech. People are listening, this guy speaks beautiful stuff. What a bench. What a bench, exactly. I tell you, let's go do a mitzvah. Let's go do a mitzvah. He said, no, 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 I don't believe in that, right? I don't feel like I want to do the mitzvah. Did I ask you how you feel? Did I ask you whether you believe in the mitzvah or not? That's not what I asked you. You think it's right? I asked you, do me a favor, come, let's put on tefillin. Do it. Put up a mezuzah. Hi. Keep kosher, right? You understand, you don't understand, you're in the mood, you're not in the mood, it's not what I asked you. 
I ask you to do the mitzvah. So again, it's not an internal fix. You're not holding there yet. But guess what? In a second, you can start doing any mitzvah you want. I tell you, hey, start dancing. It's your friend's wedding. Hey, I'm not in the mood. I had a hard day. I didn't ask you to do the mood. It's your friend's wedding. I asked you to get up on the dance floor and start dancing. What's the problem? So again, the minute you get out of your head and out of your feelings, you can live a life par excellence in all your garments, thought, speech, and action. Isn't that brilliant? You can literally be a transformed human being. And yes, grant you, disclaimer, externally. No one's no, taking that away. It's external. But bottom line is, people judge you how? By the marketing, by the package. People buy most products a nice package. You will create for yourself a beautiful package. What's inside? What's inside everybody else? A lot of turmoil, a lot of challenges, and a lot of struggles of life. Fine, and you have to work on that. And that you need time for. But while you're going through the process of transforming yourself on an intellectual level, and on studying and understanding everything, and while you're trying to, to really get a, a feeling of love and an awe for God and for, let's say, a spouse, a child, a friend, meanwhile, you can wear your best suit. You, you, you can put on your best suit. All your thoughts are amazing. Your speech is amazing. Your action's amazing. So you don't have to be holding there. You just gotta do it. And grant you, yes, it's a fake. I wonder if it's a fake, it's more external. It's not internalized. I don't know, it's a fake because it's not internalized, but in the external level, it's real. When you tell someone, I like you, thank you, even though you don't mean it and you don't believe it, it's still real in the world of speech. And, and in, your, in your thoughts and in your action. And ultimately, that's where it's at. Until and this is, internal. oh, and this is the revolutionary concept of the Alta Rebbe is that you don't have to wait till it becomes internal. You can start the process of dressing up. And this way, the benefits, your thoughts are healthy, your speech is healthy, your actions are healthy, but not only that, as you start walking the walk and talking the talk and having the right thoughts, it will start having a trickle effect on how you feel, how you really feel, and, how you, and your thought process, your thinking process. It will, so to speak, back you in to an internal transformation. Yes, there are times you want to start from the, from the inside. But meanwhile, why, why wait and miss out on a beautiful life until you figure it out? Meanwhile, live the way you're supposed to. Say the things the way you're supposed to. Be a, good, be a good friend the way you're supposed to. And with time, you'll figure it out. But don't because you're trying to figure out your life, don't be, what do you say, don't be a mensch. Be a mensch. What's a mensch? A mensch is, he puts on a nice suit. He's coming to, he, can you imagine someone shows up at a wedding not wearing a nice suit? You ever go to a wedding? Everyone wears nice suits. In the morning, you saw them with dungarees and, and jeans. What, what happened over here all of a sudden? And the answer is, because now it's a wedding. A wedding you have to dress up. Whether you're holding about, whether you, you feel that way inside, who cares? Wedding you dress up. So, in other words, you see you're able to put on garments that you're not necessarily holding by. You maybe you'd rather be on the, on, the, on the work job, you know, pouring cement, whatever, whatever you like doing. Or sitting in an office and wearing just casual clothing. At the wedding you dress up. So the same thing also, every aspect of your life, whoever you meet and whoever you, are, you, you, you uh, inter, in, uh, are involved with, th throw positive thoughts, say the right speech, talk the right action. Meanwhile, guess what happens? You're living a great life. <clears throat> now, that is about life, in other words, but more importantly, when it comes to a relationship with God, the thought, speech, and action technique works also. Why? Because when a person studies Torah, right? So what are you using your intellect to understand the Torah that you're studying? When a person prays and a person develops a love for God and an awe for God, so that's all working on your koichles premium, your emotional powers. But ultimately, where does it play out? Very simple. What are you thinking about right now? 
And as long as you're thinking about God and about what you studied, you're bringing into your, into your loading dock of your thoughts godly thoughts. And by doing that, what you're actually doing is you're bringing God into your being, almost like in English it's called a transfusion. You're having a transfusion of God. Why is that? Very simple. Because on one hand, God created the world. Right? This infinite God created the world. God's infinite. He wanted to give us an opportunity and ability to connect with Him, with God Himself. Now, how could finite human beings connect with the infinite? We are finite human beings. If we touch infinite, we would disappear. But on the other hand, God wanted to give us an opportunity to connect with the infinite. So He created something which is called the Torah. The Torah has its God's will and wisdom, God's teachings. And when you, with your brain, study the Torah, you're actually getting a transfusion of God. And if, as you think about, Torah, about the Torah, guess what's on your loading dock right now? God's in your loading dock. You're, right? And when you talk words of Torah, guess what's coming through your mouth? Godly. God. Godly. And when you're going to do a mitzvah, and you're excited about God, guess what's going through you? You're becoming a person that's totally trans, transfused with God. Now, do you have to believe in God? Do you have to understand it completely? No. True, it's better if you understand it and you feel it and you love God and that's the, that's the, that's the ideal way to serve God. But let's say, for example, you come to a class, you know what, the Imam is really studying Torah, I really don't feel great today about God, he disappointed me. Whatever you're going through, I'm going to sit down and study Torah. Bottom line is, the medicine is coming in. Your loading docks are being filled with God. <laughs> Your speech is now full with godly thoughts. And your action is full of godly actions. So what better way to bring God into your life, in a real way? Now, the author goes on to say, and that is why it's brought down, it says, that um, this world that we're living in, this physical world, it's, there's, it, there's a tremendous benefit and power in our ability to create a bond with God much greater than the world to come. Why is that? The elder explains very simple. Because in the world to come, God's infinite light is so powerful, right? So can we get close to the light? No. We disappear. So God allows us to have like a ray. So it's not the light itself. It's like, for example, if we went up now to the sun, correct? Then we would be blown away, burnt away. But we, we have down here a ray of a ray. And therefore we're able, as a matter of fact, you know, everyone knows if you go out to the sun for too long, you get burnt. So we get a ray, a ray of the ray of the sun. That's what we benefit from. So when, in the world to come, the closest we'll get to is a ray of God, not God himself. In this world, you know, in this world, what we have, we have the Torah and we have the mitzvot. What is Torah? And what is mitzvot? Torah is bas basically God's will, wisdom, that was put into a book that we human beings, finite human beings, can sit and study it. So let's say you sit down now and study Torah for an hour. So while you're studying Torah, fine, you're comprehending the Torah. You have to use your mind, you have to use your intellect, and you're comprehending the Torah. So what you're doing is you're bringing God weir into your mind. So if you sit and study, for example, Torah for an, hour for an hour, your mind, if you're able to do, so to speak, a spiritual MRI, you would see your mind is lit up with a godly light. As a matter of fact, there is, there is MRI studies that they do that, that gauge people's minds depending on what they're doing and their joy and so on and so forth. But I can guarantee you, if you were able to do an MRI when a person's studying Torah, you would see literally the light of God in, in, the, in the mind. Now, the reality is you can't study Torah all day. You're driving the car or you're busy at work. But every free moment, you can, you can allow the, study, the Torah that you studied to penetrate through your thought process. So what happens when you think Torah? The light of God is lightening up your thoughts. Once the light of God is lightening up your thoughts, you have God in you. God himself is in you. In the world to come, it's a ray of God. 
But here it's God himself. It's God's will and wisdom that he was able to put into some kind of a uh, transformer uh, that, that's, that's, pen that's infiltrating in your mind and more importantly in your thought process. So your thought process gets this like beautiful cushion of God and godliness. In other words, the analogy I give is, for example, let's say for example you have water coming down from a mountain. Right? So you have water coming, let's say the water is on a mountain, let's say 10,000 feet up, and it goes down the mountain 10,000 feet and comes to the bottom. Is there a difference between the water that hits the bottom and the water on the top? No. You have the same water, it started 10,000 feet up, and it comes down, and it's the same water here. So the same water that's here was once up there, and now it's down here. So the same thing also, God's Torah, what's God's Torah? It's God's wisdom, that was in heaven, with God, infinite power, travel down into this book, and you study the book, what are you drinking? The pure water. So when you study the Torah, and you think about the Torah, you're bringing God weir into your mind, and then afterwards, as you think about it, into your thought. Now once you think about God enough, guess what happens now? And your whole mind and thought process becomes extremely powerful and beautiful, lit up with the, the, the godly light. Answer the question to yourself. Do you think you can think negative thoughts? No. Or hateful thoughts? No. It just doesn't work. It doesn't fit in. It just, it just doesn't work that way. How could you put a, in a place that has a light of God on, right, beaming, it just, there's no room for it to rest or even to, to, to sit. There's no room for it. Mm -hmm. If you didn't think about God and it's a, th a thought that's a loading dock that's empty, everything goes on there. All the garbage goes on there, right? But if you're studying Torah, thinking about Torah, guess what happens? Not only there's no room for anything negative, when you, your natural thoughts are going to be what? God and godly. And especially as you develop a love for God, your thoughts are always going to be, ooh, what can I do to make God happy today? What can I do to create a, d a deeper relationship with God? And your thoughts are going to be rolling in a beautiful way. The same thing also with speech. If you sit and study Torah, and by the way, this is very, very important to know this, when a person studies Torah, when a person studies Torah, it's important not just to read, like you're reading a book in your mind, you have to actually say the words. So for example, let's say you learn in Chumash, you say, you say the words, voracious, and obviously if you don't know what it means, you take an English Chumash, and you say voracious in the beginning, right? Bara, Elohim, God created, and so on and so forth. When a person not reads Torah, again, studies Torah, utters it with his words, says it out with his mouth, you are actually, what are you doing? Just like you're doing in your thought, you're bringing in God and godliness into the loading dock, you're actually bringing it where? You're bringing God into your speech. Now your mouth is getting used to saying words of Torah, holy words, not the content, the godly light. There's a big difference, we're not talking true content, godly content, but it's the godly light that's going down into your mouth. And as your mouth is moving, what's happening now? You're being transformed with this godly energy in your mouth. So do you think this mouth that says words of Torah, but not only says it, but actually feels the love for God, is going to go say something negative afterwards? No. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't fit in. It's incongruous. Incongruous, exactly. It's not gonna, it just doesn't go, it does, it's not in sync. So as you say words of Torah, whether you understand it, whether you feel it, you meanwhile bring this powerful light into your mouth. Obviously, if you understand it and you feel it, it's great, because you're transforming your, your uh, um, uh, emotional powers and intellectual powers, your your internal powers, but more importantly, you're taking your external powers and you're only filling it with what? With words of Torah, words of kindness, words of uh, 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 gratefulness and thankfulness and so on and so forth. Godly energy. Godly energy, exactly. I'm quoting you. What happens now when not only do you, in your thoughts, you're thinking about God and godliness, and in your speech, right, you're saying godly uh, words, and then you actually, when you're moving, I'm going to do a mitzvah, I'm going to pray, I'm going to study, I'm going to help someone, I'm going to be kind, right, and you're actually move, you're moving. So what's happening now, your, your whole being is filled, filled with godliness, become a godly human being. And that's something 
that you cannot attain in the world to come. Not before you were born, because we know the soul always existed, and the soul will always exist. Not before you were born, not even after you die. Why? Because over there you're only getting the ray. Here you're getting God himself. So for example, when you eat kosher, you are internalizing God on every level of your being. Your thought process, you have to think how you're going to buy the kosher and how you're going to make the kosher and so on to make sure it's the milk and meat. So it's in your thought process. Right in your speech, you eat it and you make the blessing. And then in your action, whatever you're doing, you're actually bringing God within you. You cannot get that in the world to come on such a, on such a deep level. And speech, thought, and action. Exactly. Thought, speech, and action. And in other words, it's like, to, to, to bring it out in a, in a, in a, different, uh, a different format, is, you know, the, the um, let's see, you know, on a negative, so I'll bring it to the positive. You know, for, for example, let's say somebody has in his nature, in his nature, he likes stealing. There's an English term for it. Like what? Stealing. Stealing. But he never steals in his life. He never steals in his life. He likes it. He, has, he would love to take something that doesn't belong to him. He would love it. It's in his uh, emotional nature, in his, in his philosophical uh, beliefs, right? Why, should, uh, why can I have something that doesn't belong to me? Why not? But does he ever steal? No. Then you have somebody, he doesn't believe you steal, absolutely, but yours is yours, mine is mine, if I can help you, why not? But it wouldn't take something that doesn't belong to me. He has no interest in taking something that doesn't belong to him, but he goes and steals. Who's called a thief? The Who's called a thief? The one, the one that steals. Ah, you're gonna say to him, do you believe you should take something? Absolutely not. I would, I, it's wrong to take it. He really understands why it's wrong. And he really feels it's disgusting to take something that doesn't belong to you. But he stole it. He's called a thief. He's a garment. Exactly. He, he was called a thief. On the other hand, someone else that believes, yeah, take other something that doesn't belong to you. Why not? But he doesn't, he doesn't steal. He doesn't He's not called it. a thief. In other words, when you're, we're not judged based on how we think or feel or believe. We're judged where? In the actions. So the same thing also. Let's say you believe that, no, you should be nasty to everybody. And you actually hate all people. But on the other hand, you go in every day, you go to the soup kitchen and you feed people soup. Or you go ahead and you help people, right? What is that all about? Who do you, who do you judge as a good person? The one that believes you should be good but doesn't help anybody? Or one that doesn't believe and actually helps people? The one that helps. So in other words, ultimately, who are we? We are judged and we are a human being based on our action, our speech, and what we're thinking about right now. What, true, it's nice to be in sync together with our philosophies and our feelings, but ultimately, what, where is it at? It's all in the garments. And this is why this chapter of Tanya is literally, the most, I believe, one of the most powerful chapters in Tanya to help you with anything that you're going through in life. Um, whether it's Torah and mitzvot, whether it's good behavior, or even, let's say, for example, you're in a down mood, right? Let's say you're not in a good mood right now, and for good reasons. Right? You read the news, something happened to a friend, a relative. Good reasons, you have plenty of reasons to be upset. And you're actually feeling upset, and, right, and rightfully so. But we all know what happens when you get upset, and you get more upset, and more upset. You get, you, you get in a bad mood, you can hurt yourself, you get depressed, you can hurt yourself, you can hurt other people. So we know it's not a good thing. Even though you have right, so therefore. Here comes the author and says, okay, let's not wait till you're totally ready to be in a good mood. Let's not wait, because that's a job. I want right now, I want this gift. Thought, I want you to think positive things. Speech, I want you to say positive things. Actions, do positive actions. To come along and say you can't, no, you can't think it. You can't feel it. But you definitely can wear it in thought, speech, and action. And this allows you the opportunity that at any moment to transform your life from an external place. And that's fine. Because at the end of the day, as what we say before, who's the thief? The one that internally is the thief or the one that externally is the thief? The one that externally is the thief. Who is the one that helps people? Not the one that has these grandiose ideas and grandiose feelings, but doesn't do anything, but the one that actually helps the person. So here you can literally be a transformed human being, as we call externally, because you're not internally internalized it, 
But that's really that's really where it's at. Until it becomes interim. But and the pro, pro is exactly. Eventually, if you think it enough, and you speak it enough, and you do it enough, it will yeah, become right. internal. And if it doesn't, don't worry. Keep on doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. it because does. really, what's the important <laughs> is the machshava dibur emaisa. Now, what happens? We know. What happens? We know. And this is why it's important to understand this chapter of Tanya is the Yetzahara, Who's the Yetzahara? The evil inclination. He has one goal in mind. He doesn't care you don't study Torah and do mitzvot. His goal is what? To get you down and depressed. Once he gets you down and depressed, then he gets control over you. So he'll come to you, and this is classic. He'll say, come on, stop being a faker. You know, you're this altruistic person, you help people, you say all these kind words, you think all these thoughts. You don't hold by it, you don't believe in it. We know who you really, who you really are. Now, is, is, the, is the Yetzirah right? Absolutely at times. But guess what he's trying to do? He's trying to get you to stop. Thi- he's trying to get you get stop thinking and stop speaking and stop doing. And then guess what? You'll end up. You'll end up with nothing. At least you have something. And if you have that, you can jumpstart the internal aspects. So in other words, knowing this, know you know you have to you have to know your enemy. What what who's your enemy? Yitzhara. He's going to come and tell you you're a fake. And the response to Yitzhara is, guess what? I am a fake. But you know what? At least at least at least I'm I'm, I'm producing. Thought, speech, and action. And if slowly, over time, we'll get, to, we'll get to the internal part. As long as a person continues with his thought, speech, and action, the sky's the limit. And that's why I believe this is the, literally the, the, the most important um, quick fix. But it's not only a quick fix, it's because you really have to think about it, and you really got to you know, put into action. But it's really an opportunity to allow yourself at any moment to look in the mirror and say, guess what? Life is great. And look at that when you look in the mirror and you say, life is great, what happens? You see, look at all your smiles. Just hearing me saying it, you're smiling, right? Because it does work. And over time, you'll work on the insides. But don't let, for a second, the guard down of thought, speech, and action. And that, nobody has an excuse that you can't control your thought, speech, and action. Because everybody at any moment could have, has, full control over thought, speech, and action because there's not much control. You just got to take it off and put it on. You just need to do it. And you don't need to feel great to do it. You don't need to be inspired to do it. You just got to do it. I think this is the biggest gift you can give yourself. Study this chapter, work on your thought, speech, and action, and you'll all have a great life.